Hi there, I'm going to talk to you about duty of care for your Anton range of analyzers. We're going to talk about Sprint Evo today, but equally a lot of this will all of this will apply to your V range if you've got one of those as well. So when I say duty of care, what I'm talking about is getting the best out of your analyzer. So looking after it, the way you use it, the way you treat it, so you get maximum life out of it and minimum problems. So what we're going to start with is just talk about in general. Um, Flue gas is a very hot, humid um, gas sample, and obviously we've got water traps and clever probes with the Evo and various ways of trying to prevent water getting into the instrument. But in the winter in particular, you get a lot of moisture in your flue gas. If that then sits and you get some, some of that moisture that remains in the analyzer overnight or whatever, you put that in a cold vehicle overnight, that will condensate out inside the analyzer and effectively you're getting moisture inside your piece of electronic equipment, not good for it. So the most important message from this whole video is bring your analyzer in out the van or car at night. Um, particularly in the winter, maybe less important when we're not getting um, you know, the summer months and what have you, but certainly if it's cold at night, bring it in, it will save condensation in your analyzer, which means it will last longer and perform better. So that's the first thing. Um, the other thing um, to, to note, this, this is actually a reason why this is soft, is two reasons. The bag itself is to give a bit of insulation um, to sort of help buffer any changes in temperature. But um, you know, even still, we don't recommend leaving it in the vehicle overnight. So that's the first thing I would suggest. Um, general duty of care, looking at your analyzer, important thing to know is obviously in the back here you've got two magnets that help it um, stick to the appliance. Magnets will pick up any swarf or um, you know, little bits of um, metal or whatever that are maybe lying around site. So be careful, make sure this is clean, get a, a damp cloth every now and again and give the back of in particular a good wipe down. But it doesn't hurt to give the whole thing a bit of a clean off every now and again. But if you do get swarf on here, you put it on an appliance and it starts sliding, obviously you can scratch a customer's appliance which you don't want and they don't want either. So it's always worth giving that a good clean from time to time. Um, when you turn the instrument on, it's really important that you connect up the flue probe to do that. So middle spigot, as you'll know, is the, is the flue spigot. Um, on goes the flue probe, obviously connecting your temperature, um, K connector here as well. Um, and basically what you're then doing is, once you're all connected up, when you turn it on, you're actually purging not just the gas, the residue gas out of the instrument from the last job, you're also clearing then and putting fresh air all the way through your probe. Um, so again, the idea of that is that when you're using it, you're, um, you're, you're zeroing it, if you like, in clean air. Um, so I, I won't turn it on and do that, but I think you understand the principle of that. And again, when you turn it off, it's really important that you leave the probe connected because that's purging not just the instrument and cleaning that out and putting fresh air through the, instru through the instrument, it's also pulling fresh air through the probe then again, making sure that's ready for the next job. Um, again, that's quite important. So I'm going to remove that. The other thing, oh, an important point here, when you remove um, the... K connector, um, so let's just do that again. Got your K connector in. Really important that you remove the K connector by the plug. A lot of people yank it from the cables and eventually you'll, you'll end up pulling these wires out. We have beefed up the strain relief in here to make sure that this is a bit more robust, but we do know that people still yank on that and eventually you will end up um, you know, getting loose connections in your K connector there. Uh, so that's that. One of the people have problems with analyzers. Nine times out of ten, it isn't actually a problem with the analyzer. It's a problem with the um, flue probe. So, key areas to look for in your flue probe: um, if you get cracks in the filter bowl, or any um, point on here where you've not got a nice air airtight seal, what happens is, is it, it dilutes the sample. So you've got your flue probe coming in here, rounded through into the instrument. If you've got anywhere that it can let air in, obviously it will give you, um, you know. It will dilute the actual flue gas and give you strange readings. So, what you want to do is really, this is the, the important bit, this tends to be the area where you get issues. So, critically, people take the, the, the flue probe out of the bag by the handle, let that drop to the floor. If you keep doing that, eventually you will break this and crack it, um, which is the area that causes problems. So, if you're having funny readings, um, investigate this first. 
but please, when you take it out, take care of this area, not to drop it on the, on the floor in the first place. The way we check the integrity of this flu probe, if you're ever unsure of it, is what you can do is put your thumb over this end of the flu probe, put your mouth over this end, ensure you cover the area um, which has got your thermocouple in there so that you're actually getting an airtight seal over it, and then blow as hard as you can. I can't pass air through it, which tells me this is airtight, so there's no leaks on it. If I could push air through, I'm now going to investigate further and see where that might be. And if need be, uh, this is typically the place you have leaks, I would replace the whole filter assembly uh, and water trap. Um, the other thing you can do is that often the problem is caused when people have let it fill up with water, um, you get a lot of moisture in here, it can affect the readings and what have you. Um, next thing you can do is now this time put this, this end of the probe to your ear, put this end of the probe in your mouth, they're going to blow. Now I can hear there's air coming through that, I can hear that it's nice and clear, there's no gurgling so I know there's not moisture in it. If there is moisture in it, you can leave it on a radiator overnight and that generally sorts out any, uh, any issues with moisture in your flu probe. Um, Something else you want to check regularly, there's a bayonet fitting. This all comes apart for ease of um, cleaning and, um, and changing the filter. So you've got two halves here. This half of the, the filter housing, sorry, this half of the, the, the assembly here is the actual filter housing. So this is a, effectively a paper filter. This one's nice and clean and dry because it's a new instrument, but check yours. They get dirty from the inside out, so make sure it's not all sooted up. If it is, replace it. If it's very damp or wet, again, replace it. You do get a spare one with the, the kit, but more are available from your local merchants. Um, the other half of this assembly is the um, water trap, which is where condensate and moisture from the flu sample will collect. Easy way to get this out is to use your temperature clamps, uh, pull on there, and it's got the added benefit if you don't lose your, your uh, o-ring because uh, it can't come off. Once you've done that, it's really important you keep an eye on this when you're using it and keep it dry. If it does get any moisture in it, you can get this, so I'll get a cloth, clean it all out, make sure it's nice and dry, and that's going to really help prevent pulling moisture into your analyzer, which can cause a lot of damage. Um, so again, we'll pop that back in once you've cleaned it out. The two spigots on here go facing one another, so you've got a spigot inside, a spigot there, they go facing one another like that. Um, this duty of care information is on a, an A4 sheet on our website, it's downloadable from our website. Um, which shows you an assembly of how that all goes back together if you're unsure. But the O-ring sits in top, on top of the disc there, and then the bayonet goes back together. Make sure that's fully sealed, and then you can do those tests again to check the probe integrity to make sure it's not leaking after you've done that. Um, another common um, sort of call we get on the technical helpline and, uh, and we need to answer is, Sometimes people get low CO2 readings or strange or no CO readings. What that is normally, um, if it's not the issue we've already discussed with sort of a, a dilution of the sample from a crack in your um, probe assembly, is moisture inside the instrument. And again, that can manifest itself as a gurgle, you know, gurgling sounds and other things. Um, what happens is, if you don't keep an eye on this, and it's really important when you're using it, that you keep an eye. We've got a maximum fill line on here. Don't leave it till it starts filling up and gets near that maximum. Any signs of moisture in here, clean it out as I've already shown you, empty it. Um, that is a, you know, a worst case scenario. Once it goes above that, you do start sucking water into the instrument. Um, so it's really important. And we basically, uh, we leave this in line so it's, when it's on the boiler, it's nice and visible, you can see it. You don't want that um, out of the way and hidden. You want to be able to keep an eye on it. Check it, empty it if it starts getting full in the way I've already shown you. Um, if you do happen to get moisture in here, whether it be through leaving it in a van overnight or um, by sucking it in and, and not perhaps keeping an eye on that as, as well as you should, it can effectively block the sensors. It, it stops the gas getting to the sensors. So a simple solution is stick it on a radiator or a, a shelf above a radiator Give it an hour or so to sort of all dry out and then try it again and you might find that that solves the problem that you're seeing with, in terms of um, low CO and, and, um, and oxygen, well, whatever readings you might be seeing. Um, always worth looking at your 
glue probe and then drying this out before you sort of um, you know, send it back to us because it's often that one of those two things and it's easily resolved without you, you having the aggravation of sending it in to us. Um, if after you've done all that it's, you're still getting strange readings, give us a call and we'll talk it through with you. Okay, now I'm going to talk about the printer. Um, the printer, um, the main thing is about charging it. So the charger you get with your kit will charge the analyzer and the printer. It's the same, um, the same charger for both. We do do an in-car charger that a lot of people find very handy for topping up either or between jobs. Um, particularly if you use the Gas Escape Pro, uh, which is obviously um, quite a high power consuming um, probe there. Um, so it does use the battery life up a bit more quickly than perhaps using it in normal mode. Um, but yeah, there's, there's various options to, to charge it. Um, what I will say is when you get the kit for the first time and this is all new, uh, always give the batteries a really good first charge. Um, these are nickel metal hydride rechargeable batteries in the back, they're AAs, you can buy replacements for them, um, but they are do suffer a little bit more um, the sort of memory effects that the lithium ion battery in the analyzer doesn't have. Um, you can be like a mobile phone, charge that as often as you like. This does tend to prefer a full charge, full discharge, full, to get the maximum life out of it. They are easily replaced, um, you know, and they're relatively inexpensive, but uh, if you want the best out of this, then give it a good 12 to 16 hours charge first time, and obviously try and maximize that, that full charge, discharge sort of um, process each time you're using it. When you do plug it in, here's a cable, um, this one needs a bit of a charge, so you plug it in, there's about a 10 second delay. If it needs charging, it will flash. If it's fully charged, it won't flash. So that's a bit confusing, which is why I'm saying it here, but that's the flashing away, that means it does need to take a charge. So I would then leave that on until it's fully charged. Um, if that didn't come on, it means it's fully charged. So hopefully that explains a little bit of confusion that's often out there. Um, that is it, do all those things and it will, your kit that you've invested in will look after you and it will last longer and work better. So yeah, thanks for your time.